Students at Longwood University come together over the disappearance of a fellow student. We spoke with the president of Hampton Sydney's SAE chapter about the racist viral video and its implications for their fraternity. We also take a look at the new food truck that rolled out on Longwood's campus this past week. This is Central Virginia News. Sigma Alpha Epsilon has been in the news recently after a video of the fraternity's University of Oklahoma chapter was leaked online. The video featured members of the organization chanting derogatory racial comments, which resulted in the chapter being closed down and members being suspended. In Farmville, Virginia, Hampton City College has a Sigma Alpha Epsilon chapter of their own. On a lighter note, Longwood Dining Services just rolled out their new food truck on campus for students, faculty, and staff. CVN's Jamika Williams brings us more from the food truck. I'm Nick Nigliero. And I'm Mary Alexander. We'll see you next week. This is Mary Alexander reporting outside what remains of the Cunningham's residence halls at Longwood University. The buildings behind me are expected to come down and be cleared away by January. The effects of the Cunningham's project extend to the Office of Residential and Commuter Life, or RCL which is in charge of student housing accommodations both on and off campus. Larry Robertson, the Dean of Students and the head of RCL, worked with Jean Willwall, Associate Director of Occupancy Management, to adjust to the loss of resident space by assigning more students to off-campus housing in the new apartments at Lancer Park. We're staying pretty much ahead of the game in many respects. I mean, if it was up to me, it would still be a place where students could live, but I think at the same time, it does make sense for our campus to have a true campus center. The new residence hall project is foreseen to begin in the spring. The completed buildings, which will be located here in the Art Quad, should be operational for students by August of 2016. Reporting for Central Virginia News, I'm Mary Alexander. The following video contains material that may be offensive to some viewers. Discretion is advised. Since the leakage of this racial chant video, the Oklahoma University chapter of Sigma Alpha Epsilon has been under scrutiny. CBS reported that freshman Parker Rice instigated the chant. In response to this occurrence, SAE Executive Director Blaine Ayers held a press conference in Chicago on March 18th. The recent actions of certain members at the University of Oklahoma do not reflect the fraternity I now lead. I want to be crystal clear. We have a zero tolerance for that sort of behavior. Along with SAE chapters all over the country, Hampton Sydney College faced the effects of the Oklahoma University chapter's actions. Although the Hampton Sydney offices declined to comment, we spoke with their SAE chapter president, Angus Musser, in their SAE fraternity house located on the corner of Fraternity Circle Road. We've acknowledged that we don't accept that and we don't subscribe to that kind of behavior and racism. We kind of feel like we don't even really want to be associated with the name SAE because that's just so terrible like people shouldn't be chanting things like that at all i think it's negatively affected people's view of sae as a whole down the road longwood university does not have an sae chapter but there are plenty of greek organizations on campus assistant director of fraternity and sorority life andrea martinez hopes to ensure this does not happen at longwood i think that starting to to gauge the conversation from a safe place um, we don't want to feel like we're attacking our students but i do think that there are very much areas that they can improve um, and that these are opportunities to have really good dialogue and conversation um, about what the future of Longwood is and how we can continue to be a very caring and um, wonderful Lancer community. The SAE chapters at Hampton, Sydney and beyond have a long road ahead of them before the effects of OU's racist chant will wear off. Reporting for Central Virginia News, I'm Mary Alexander. Ah. Yay! Joshua Bolt is my son. He is 13 years old. He has cerebral palsy. He has brain injury from that experience, and um, that makes everything physical a challenge for him. For Joshua, the experience of um, participating in Heartland Horse Heroes is more than just riding a horse. It is, as it is for anyone who's taking riding lessons, also includes the grooming and the caring for the horse. He has to actually hold the lead rope and walk her down to the arena. He has to go up to the mounting block. He mounts, he'll go into the arena. He'll spend 20, 30, sometimes 40 minutes in the arena. And then at the end, he always likes to go out. Then he'll come in and after he rides, he's responsible for helping take the saddle off and brush and that sort of thing after the ride too. Joshua, I think that if he were asked, he would 
talk about how it feels um, to feel free when he's on the horse. He can have fun while doing things that we want him to do at home that aren't so fun, but he can have fun doing it when he's on the horse. Um, such as using his left hand. Um, we've seen a, a drastic improvement in his left side. We have to do exercises equally on both sides, or sometimes we push the left side a little bit more than the right side. And now, um, where he started out holding one rein, now he holds two reins with two hands and does things with his left hands that he wouldn't, he wouldn't do before. They're, they're not holding him on that horse. He's holding himself on the horse, and that's just amazing. Years before the death of her husband, Shepard's daughter died in a car accident on her 18th birthday. When my daughter Cheryl died, there was a period of time that I wondered, you would look out of the window or drive in the car and you would see people going to the grocery store and doing everyday things and it was like, how, how can they be doing everyday things and how can life go on when my child is gone? It was that, it was that, that hurt and that deep feeling. Despite the losses and hardships, Shepard continues to touch students' lives and inspire them just as her daughter inspired her. It was a hard time, you know. I, I spent a year trying to decide what to do, and that's when I decided that I was going back to school. And I sort of lived her life. Hi, Nolsey! It's a trap! You're listening to Viva Fan Life. Hey guys, welcome to Viva Fan Life, a fan based show where we can all embrace our inner fandom nerd. Coming to you from a galaxy far, far away, I'm Mary Alexander. In a few moments, we're going to take a trip through the time vortex to meet a very special guest. My sources tell me the doctor was sighted in small town Farmville, Virginia. Our favorite bow tie wearing Time Lord is teaching English at Longwood University under the alias Dr. Sean Barry. He primarily teaches British literature and poetry classes at Longwood. I'm sure he's a very busy man, but let's pop by his office now and see if he has a few minutes. Setting a course for Longwood University. We've landed in Granger Hall, home of the English and Modern Languages Department. Let's see if the doctor is in. Hmm, looks like it's locked. This should do the trick. Ah, here we go. Hi, Dr. Barry. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thanks. So we'll launch right into this. How often are Doctor Who references thrown your way? Maybe once or twice a week. Is it usually the students or the faculty who get the biggest kick out of your resemblance to Matt Smith? The students, though some of my colleagues are also amused by that resemblance. So do you ever incorporate anything Doctor Who related in the classroom? On occasion I have been known to say when we are falling behind on the syllabus that things have gotten timey-wimey and we'll need to make some adjustments. Um, are there any other fandoms that you enjoy besides Doctor Who? I grew up as a, a Star Trek watcher. I definitely was a big fan of The Next Generation as a kid. It is possible that my childhood bedroom still has some Star Wars posters in it. My folks have left those up in order to remind me that I was a hopeless nerd and probably still am. Well, the Force will be with you always. That is, that is true. I do have one more question for sure. you. I really have to know. Do you have a fob watch? I decline to answer that question. So, you could very well be the doctor. Well, I'll be honest, I'm one of the many students guilty of throwing Doctor Who references at you, but you seem to be a really good sport about it. Thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure talking to you, too. Thank you. And if you do happen to cross a fob watch and get your memories back as a Time Lord, feel free to start a study abroad program with other planets. I'm sure this campus could use a lot of off-world culture. I'll be sure to do that. Well, I'm afraid time's up for this episode of Eva Fan Life. Thanks for tuning in, and feel free to follow me on Twitter at Fandom Nerd for Life. That's Fandom Nerd number four life. For more fandom fun, check out my blog at storify.com slash Viva Fan Life and tune in next time for more of your favorite fandoms. Until next time, live long and prosper. Yeah!